You can't talk about WCBS without talking about the one voice, the only voice that was on then in 1967 when we signed on, and the same voice is on today, 45 years later. It's got to be Charles Osgood. Hello. Hello, hello, Wayne. Yes, indeed. I, I never imagined uh, 45 years ago when we when WCBS News 88, we had prepared for, the, for that moment, and then a, a plane crashed into the tower at High Island, and uh, it put us off the air. And also what was then WNBC, which, which shared that tower with us. We were back on the air in a few days, but the grand opening uh, turned out not to be possible. Did you I'm, think, what, oh my goodness, what have I done? What, are we doomed? Is this a sign from the heavens? Uh, did you, were you confident 45 years ago that you'd still be sitting here today in 2012, 45 years later, on the same radio station doing the same kind of thing? Yes, the thoughts crossed my mind. You know, if, I wonder if 45 years from now I'll be doing the same thing. It's, it just shows you I've... I have no imagination. I'm still doing the same thing I was doing then. You know, you like to, on your CBS Sunday morning broadcast, which everyone loves, have a page from the Almanac. Well, guess what? You are the Almanac this time. You are 45 years of all news radio, which, when you think about it, um, it's really an amazing history. When you think of all the things that have happened in 45 years, all the stories you've covered, all the events that we've all shared together, and... We see so much change in how we get information now. Everyone's so smart and up-to-date constantly because they have so many ways of hearing things. What is it about WCBS that gives you something a little extra, that, that, that gives you more than just the headlines? Of course, I have framed all of those 45 years through, through my work with WCBS. And I, and I think a lot of people, anybody who lives within the listening area, which is a very big listening area for, w, for WCBS, uh, this is the this is the station they go to 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 keep in touch with the uh, with the world, not just this area, but with the world. And uh, and I and I think radio is still the best. You know, I know I, I do television, and I like to I like to think of uh, of radio though as the, as the main thing that I do. And and all of my work, that, and especially, and for all of the my friends who are all in this area. Uh, WCBS is the is is what you think of when you say when you say I wonder you know wonder what's going on. You turn on to WCBS and you can and you can find out. But there are other stations that do news and all news, and there are websites and there are cable channels twenty four seven. There's something about this radio station that I felt since I was a young listener listening to you way back when and still do. Well, I think we were handed something very special uh, because. Because CBS News was already there, had established itself as the preeminent broadcast news organization. We had the tradition of Ed Morrow and 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 Eric Severide and and of Walter Cronkite and uh, of Charles Corralt, my predecessor on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, and people knew these people and trusted them. And so we we were handed quite a lot of responsibility when they said, "Okay, we're going to be telling you the news all the time," and and on an ongoing twenty four seven basis, you can find out what's happening in the world best by tuning into to, uh, news radio. And, I, and so I, I think that's the, that's the secret. And because, because we were handed that legacy, we, we, we took it seriously and tried to, tried to continue in, the, in, that, in that tradition that uh, this is, you know, when you hear it here, you can be, you can be sure that it's, it, it's going to be accurate. CBS had deep pockets, thankfully, still does. But at the time, this was a launch. This was an upstart. This was something brand new. And no one knew if it would work. Um, did you think it would work? Did you wonder how, how will we fill 24 hours a day with news? Isn't, isn't it funny how anybody could have ever imagined that you could not fill 24 hours a day with the news? It, it is, there's so much going on all the time. And uh, I, it, I think the, the, the idea that, that uh, golly, there's just no news today. I, I may have mentioned uh, to you before that, uh, that I know that the BBC, at the, there were times when the BBC would say, and now the news, there is no news. <laughs> <laughs> but, let, me, let me try that today and see what happens. Yes, I, I don't think you can say that. <laughs> but 45 years is a really good start. What does the future look like? The beauty of it is that nobody knows what it's going to look like. Nobody knows that you can't read the future. Some people want you to, you know, they, they say, well, you do the news. You know, what, what do you think is going to happen? We can rep we can report the the past. We can uh, we can try to find out what's going on and and report those things that we know aren't going on now. But nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows who's going to win the next election. Nobody knows well, how this this uh, very dicey economic situation uh, will will work out. Not just 
the United States, but for a lot of other countries in the world too. There is, they talk about the global economy. It is global. And anything that happens here affects the rest of the world. And anything that happens in the rest of the world affects us too. So you have to have your, you, you have to be aware. And a, awareness of what's going on in the world is, uh, it's, it, it's a responsibility. I mean, for, for, to be a, a, a civilized human being these days, you, you need to know. And I think, uh, it, you know, only in those places where the, the, the government doesn't want you to find out what's going on uh, is, is that a problem. And, that, and that's hard to fight because of the internet and, and all of that now. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's great work that we do. I mean, I, what I think Jefferson had, had said that, that uh, as far as he was concerned, the, the, the free press was, was more important than, than the government because, uh, because if you didn't have a free press, uh, then the audience, the audience. I, I, I really shouldn't refer to the people out there as the audience, but, but, but a lot of them are in the, in the audience for us. Do you think, Wayne, do you think when, you, when you're broadcasting of however many hundreds of thousands of people maybe listening to you? I think of one person. I don't know who that person is, but I think of one person I'm speaking to and hopefully relating to. And, you know, I learned that from the likes of Charles Osgood and so many great names that have come by this radio station and others over the years. Yes, if you, if you think that you're talking to millions of people and you try to address them, you're going to use a different, completely different tone of voice than you would use otherwise. True. And, I, and for my own, people have asked me a number of times, and I said, well, what I think of, my sister and I were very close. We were, we were Irish twins. We were both born in the, in the same year, me in January and she in uh, December. And I know that she always thought I was very funny and, and she laughed at all my jokes and, and she, she enjoyed me. And I want the audience to enjoy me, so I pretend I'm talking to my sister. Nice. <laughs> I always assume the person listening is smarter than I am because chances are they are. I've met our, I've met our listeners at many functions and some pretty bright, educated, smart, fun people who listen. And I think that helps me. I hope I don't talk down to people. That's, that's the main aim that I have because I realize – it's a privilege to be able to speak to such very well-read, interesting people. And you know, you're right when you say that. I mean, I, I have suspected for a long time that the audience was smarter than we are. Uh, unfortunately, I think there are some people in, the, in, our, in our business who, who think that they know so much more than the audience that they have to dumb it down or the audience won't know what they're talking about. But we, I've learned time and time again over these 45 years of association with WCBS that if I say something that that is deserving of, uh, of, of criticism, I'll get it <laughs> because <laughs> they're listening. They're, they're paying attention to what you say and uh, they're tolerant and they're understanding, but they, they're not going to let you get away with it. The only thing worse than getting criticism is getting nothing. And that means no one's listening or paying attention or cares. It's great that people have passion about what we do. You have passion about telling stories, about writing. What's your advice if somebody asks you, how do I speak or write more colorfully? Well, I think there are there are ways that you you know they, they suggest that you write. I mean, there there are lots of books on writing and how to do this. But I think we all love to tell each other stories. I mean, if something happened that you want to tell your wife about when you get home uh, from from work, or something you saw, or she's got something that happened in the neighborhood that she wants to tell you about. It's not you don't you don't try to make it colorful. You 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 really want to say what it is that happened. You want to you want to convey that the the story as you saw it, as you know it, and it is a story. A story is something somebody did or something that happened to somebody, and and what makes it a story is that is that it it, it is either typical of what happens to people or it's a story that's going to affect our lives. Or it's as an example of how what's going on in the world can can affect our lives. We can we you put yourselves into a story. You know that's why they I mean, the protagonist in a story is somebody that that you can put yourself in that position and you can um, you can sympathize and you can understand. So I think that's you know Don Hewitt, who is was the, you know, certainly the best uh, television we'll news producer that, 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 that I ever heard of, used to say that. The, the fundamental question, the fundamental thought that you have to have in your mind is is to answer the question, tell me a story. Tell me a story. It's like a little kid. Mm -hmm. And we all like to be told stories. And I think you're, you know, you're spot on when you, when, you, when you say that. 
but I think trying to make, trying to affect some kind of uh, uh, artificial coloring uh, that doesn't work. But if you tell if you saw, you saw something happen, you will tell it in an animated sort of way if it's if it's the kind of thing that bears that. If it bores you and you're telling somebody that, and then and you're boring about it, then they're not going to want to hear it, and that's not that's uh, there's no reason for you to tell that story. Telling interesting stories for 45 years on WCBS, the venerable Charles Osgood, the Osgood File, CBS Sunday Morning with Charles Osgood. We love you, and we are really happy to have you around. Thank you. Same here, Wayne.